Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 for Tuesday, April the 9th, 2024. Well, it actually was a zero-sum game today, yet again. The markets opened higher. They ran up, reached the session highs early, and then went through a pretty strong sell-off and then ended up buying it all back to finish back up at the highs. So zero-sum gain, and it actually does absolutely nothing. To either side of the two counts that I'm running side by side here, as we now sit and wait for the CPI and the PPI and the rest of the data that will be coming out tomorrow and Thursday. <clears throat> now, I'm sure somebody's going to say, well, what, what is my internal feeling? It's like it's a 50-50 probability still. We saw how easily and how quickly the market dropped off today. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> when the sellers showed up and just hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Every time they tried to rally, it hit it, hit it, hit it. And it did try to, you know, they put in a decent rally, but it was after they'd actually kicked it to the curb. And we're knocking stocks like NVIDIA, was down over 30, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it, it just gets to a point where it's like, okay, you know, then you want to turn around, you want to pump back into some of these stocks and and you just start to question, it's like, what are they doing? What are they attempting to do? And to be honest with you, I still believe that quite a bit of it is all going to surround options trading. So, because I think that's what happens is like, as, as an ex-market maker, that when you had orders coming in and they were, you know, call buyers or even put sellers or put buyers, you hedged, you hedged those positions and you built them and you hedged them um, against, you know, of course, movement in the market. And so I think that's pretty much what we saw all day as larger firms moved out and larger firms, you know, pushed the market in one direction or the other and options were trading and then they all got hedged. Now, starting here with the s and I'm back on the four-hour chart. There isn't anything changing. You can actually see. This is just, that was the morning, and then it stopped, and that was the afternoon, and now we're just kind of hanging out up here at the top. I'm just going to go down right away. Let's go to the one-hour chart. We can open it up. We can take a look. There it was. There it was. So if anything, if anything. Again, it's how this is all going to get counted, I am just I can begin to tell you. If if it had been left here, then it might have been, oh, okay, so now we're starting down, a little recovery, and we're coming back down. We did exactly that. We went down, we did a little recovery, started to go back down, and then somebody stopped, and they just didn't stop. Then they just bought it, bought it, bought it, bought it, bought it. It's like, what is all of this? What is all of this? So... <clears throat> Even if we're now in a fifth wave up, at best, this is kind of an A and a very strange little B, and that was a C. This is just, it ceases to make sense on an Elliott Wave basis, but even on any basis, it ceases to make sense as to what the market is really attempting to tell us here. And I think it's what, what we end up doing is pretty much the same thing I'm going to say. The market is in flux. The market is in transition. The market is waiting for data, waiting for directional pull. And I'm not sure where they think they're going to get it from at this point, because if the Fed is really leaning more towards we're not going to uh, begin to cut rates until we have further evidence of you know stability in the inflation battle. And with those employment numbers that came out last week showing 300,000 new jobs put in, that doesn't it yes, again, I'm going to tell you, I'm pleased as all, you know what, that that came in. It, it it is actually, to me, a very wonderful thing that people can afford 
to feed a family. They can afford their lives. They can start pulling money in. They can make decisions. They can start having whatever it is that they need to have rather than trying to live in unemployment or trying to find a job. The fact that there are jobs becoming available and people are going back to work is really great. It just is inflationary. So the battle against inflation. So it really kind of comes down to, to be honest with you, just where are we going to like roll the dice? It's like, okay, I'd rather have people working. And then, okay, Fed, so now you've got to do something different. And that's going to call, be called, you know, um, deflation. You're going to have to devalue or somehow devalue, get the dollar to come down off of its perch and not go up to 108 or 110 or even higher, but to come down to 100 or below devaluing the currency is one way to kind of get the market to relax a little bit. I'll tell you that. Um, but, but again, but again, you know, that's neither here nor there because we're staring this in the face. And now we're moving into earnings, which do begin this week on Friday and they begin with the banks. And I think that'll, that may or may not set the tone. I don't know. Um, you know, we, Jamie Dimon is out talking things up and I'm sure we're going to hear from, you know, some of the others uh, this week. But we'll find out. We're going to see how how things are going to start to turn out for uh, earnings. Now, the free flow that, we're, that I'm seeing in stocks like Meta, Microsoft, Netflix, NVIDIA, uh google's actually on a little bit of a tear so you know that's just heading higher but not at because it's google and it's gigantic it doesn't move as swiftly as some of the other uh stocks but we we saw you know i mean apple trying to make a stand tesla trying to make a stand all for earnings but again, it's really, to be honest with you, I know I keep saying this, but it really goes back to uh, options and how we have, the, how expirations are set up. So tomorrow, Wednesday, we get um, CPI. And then also we get Fed minutes at um, 2 p.m., I think, again. Or maybe, let me just double check. When do they actually come out? The Fed minutes, yeah, 2 p.m. Eastern. So to fill in any blanks, to, to people that go, well, did they say that? Or what are they really saying? You know, I'm not sure that it's going to be any different than what we already know. Now, back to the s and I'm sorry I keep diverging over to other things. So if we just had to follow through on this, if anything, I got a one and then a two, and this is a one, two, three, a little four, and then we get a five. So we could say things are leaning more towards an upside, a continuation of what has been going on, or it's, it's not, or it's going to turn because right now, if it does, it has to come down pretty far. But if it comes down and starts to break below 52, 45, 44, then it's going to leave it as three up. And that's going to tell you that we're doing another leg down. Again, hitting and staying inside the box. Now, those numbers come out tomorrow starting at uh, 830 a.m. Eastern. That's when we get consumer price. And then we get wholesale inventories at 10 a.m. And we have one, two, Fed president and a Fed governor out speaking, and then the Fed minutes themselves at the 2 p.m., along with the federal budget. That ought to be exciting. And then on Thursday, we do have, as well, we have uh, PPI, initial jobless claims, PPI. And then we got a host of Fed officials out on the stump. So what can we expect? Again, I'm going to tell you, I thought this was going to break down, but you see it stayed right within the range. And I thought, okay, if this is going to break out, it did not get above 52, 74, 75. And that's what it needed to do. And then it needs to go hightail it up and get itself back above 5,300. And get above 5,309, 0809. And that'll signal that we are likely going to head to new highs. And again, those are at 53.33. So we got to get above that level to before we get to new highs. So if anything, 
And how I'm going to count this? I need more. I need more. If this is a one, two, and we're in a three, then, and then it's either that or an A, B, and a C for wave A, or A, B, and now we're in a C for wave five. I'm in a little trouble with this because it still looks pretty three wavish to me, and this could be a B wave. It could, it could, it could. So it could be A of five, B of five, C of five, and that I'm going to have to take as five because remember, oh, it's the S&P. No, cannot be a triangle. So it has to be one, two, and then we're going to get a three and a four and a five. We're not in a triangle in the S&P. So it just has to be straightforward. So it would be one, two. We're looking for a three and a four and a five. And remember what we have, 5412 is where wave five would be equal to wave one. Minute wave five would be equal to minute wave one. Now on that downside, remember that one, when this open, that one suggests that where I've marked it as three, that's the completion point. That is five. And then we have five of of minute five of minor five of intermediate wave C of primary wave B. And those are all sitting up here somewhere. I thought they were. I may have taken them down. <clears throat> Excuse me again. So, but as a fourth, then it would be coming up in a fifth wave. And it'd be a one, two, and then we're in the third. And so it should, if we are inside that third, start it kicked off real well. I will tell you that kicked off beautifully. And this and this basically was was also pretty good for a C wave. Not that it came down far enough, sure. One, A, B, C, and then off to the races. So that was a pretty good bar in terms of um, the market showing us that, well, yes, the potential is there. Now, that way, if this is a wave three, it really does need to keep going. It really does. And it needs to get above 53.10 pretty quickly. Not hanging out, not going back down, not coming back up. So I'm trusting that tomorrow, whatever is going to, how that news is going to be, how the market's going to interp interpret, that's going to give us our move. If they like it, then I expect them to gap or just to move strongly and get ourselves above there. If it doesn't come in line, if it's like going to show something they don't like, then it really needs to drop an inch to break 50, 5190 pretty quickly. And that's going to get rid of that, put this all back in together as one, two, three, four, five, or three, excuse me, five of minor five, et cetera, et cetera. And then this is one, two, one, two. And we're going down. So either way, so the way that this started, if this was, you know, again, one, two, one, two, this was a good start. That was not a good result. So if anything, the way that this thing traded this afternoon, this morning and this afternoon, it would suggest higher. I will give you that. So I would think that that we we rise on that number. Of course, now we still have Globex, we still have the Asian markets, we have the European markets, and they got a lot to say. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Moving average is nothing, nothing. Still on the four-hour chart, you can see them flat, 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 and flat. If I bring it down and we take a look at the hourly chart and we open it up, you can see that they still need to get back above the 200. So they managed to do that, and now it's going to give us the old, you know, 5 p.m. close above the um, the two, the one hour 200 moving average. And the others, you can see, click, click, and now, but they need to get back above that 50. So in other words, it's like this drove it lower and they all kind of came into place to go lower. And then this, this one move and change it all back. They've hooked and they're all going, there's the 13, the 20, and the 50 all tipping to go higher. So right now, the way they're going to leave it, we're looking for that continuation to the upside. Over in the NASDAQ, what a beast. The, the S&P actually came down a lot further in terms of percentages to, towards this low than the NASDAQ did. But here we are, same. Run up. 
get to the top of the whatever this is, whatever this line in the sand is, get up to the top, sink all the way back down. And that was, you know, 18,405 to 18,165 or 160. I was like, yikes. That's over 300, 360 points, 340 points, high to low, all very quickly. And then run it all the way back up to finish up 88, and that's on a downtick. So it was quite the ride, but I have to tell you, here's the other thing, and it's like, as someone, I do I do day trade the NASDAQ, and I'm telling you, it was like, there's like, okay, just toss it out there, boom, and boom, and when they came in and they're buying it like they were, you just had to step in and let it go. There's a quick 500, six, 700 bucks, a thousand dollars. It's like, yep. And that's what they're giving away. And also to the downside, it was a little bit more of a battle. But when they were initially doing it and they were dropping, 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 they just walk in and hit all the bids. And it's just, you just slides. And it's the same deal. You just get in and you write it down. So day trading, yeah, there was plenty of money there. Everybody should have had a fun day. Um, and again, position trading can, yeah. I feel for it. I understand for it. and But it's like, I don't know what people are hoping for. Um, but either side, they're, nobody's willing to take the stand until we get the data tomorrow on Thursday. So here in the NASDAQ, <clears throat> I've got this on to show downside. And I did that because of what the market was doing. But I'm now going to take that off. I didn't want to duplicate it. So let's remove it once, remove it twice. So what we have, again, if it's one, two, which we have from this high, one, two, one, two, and now we're back up this second wave, this is it's just so bizarre. This is A, and this is all going to be a B. <clears throat> and then this is the start of a C wave. We can get up higher. We have a couple of more points in here where, you know, you could go like this and come down. Ah, come on. And I'll bring it back down to here. And you can see we have 18,515, which is just be where the C wave would be equal to the A wave and not not exceed, not exceed. So it still could be one, two, and the drop would be very severe. So that is a possibility, okay, for the NASDAQ. Also for the S&P, but for the NASDAQ, because that's what we're talking. So it has that room, <clears throat> Martin, they can continue to chug along and buy it back up and get it up to here now if it breaks if it breaks then of course it's it can't it can't be out at wave two that's my point my point is if we're counting at one two one two and that two comes up to here it's not violating the rule and the rule is that wave two cannot take out the the starting point of wave one obvious reasons right because that's not a wave two that's the starting point for wave one. What it can do is it can come down, take out that low, and then still come back up. That it can do and still be considered a wave two. And I'm not expecting that from here. So how do I want to leave this? It's the same thing right now. The way they're finishing off, you can see that they're coming in right at the end of the day. And I'm going to kind of pump it up a little bit. So if it's closing up towards the high, then the anticipation would be that when it reopens, it still kind of goes up even more. And then again, we'd look for here. If it's a one, two, if not, and it goes through that and goes through this, then I'm going to be the same as what I'm doing in the other market. You know, one, A, B, B, C, two, one, two, and we're in the third. We're inside the third, and that's going to just should thrust, continue to thrust small and then keep going. And then here we are in a expanding triangle. So this could be a 
No, that's a downside. That's the four. We're getting uh, a one, a two, a three, four, and a five for A. Although, see, I'm not looking for a whole lot. Well, I am from here. 18,951 would be my target. Four away five. Um, but we have the one. This is just for wave three. But I'd be looking for it to go further. So maybe up to here, maybe even up to here. That would be a nice wave three. And then we pull back and then we come back three and a four and then we come back in a five. Or this, this is ABC up to here, wave A. So it's 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 five, three, five. And therefore that it's a zigzag and it's going to be just wave A of five. Because I'd hate to think that this is like, hmm. It's going to be strange, but we're going to have to let it play out and see what, what it comes up. But again, looking for a zigzag up like we had all across the board and the other impulses and get it up and eventually up into here. At least above this high at 18,709. That is when the high on the previous count would be that. Well, that's the existing high so far. So we would be looking for that to be taken out on its way you can see one, two, three, and this actually is a slight higher high. So it's A, B, C, and then we get a five. We take out that high, and we definitely kind of start heading up into these levels, up into here. And that's the one that actually is minute five against minute one. 6180 is 18,607, maybe just. That's where wave three might come in. Pull back and then do another and then get up here to 18,951. All right, moving averages here. Let's open this up. You can see it's the same deal. Look at the four hour. Everything flat, 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 even with the downside, even with the strong upside, everything remains flat. I bring it down to the hourly chart. Does it give us any clues? <clears throat> we got the 200 still up top. So it's still <clears throat> weak, weak. It's still lining up more even though we get to get a close above that hourly 200, that should be a positive. Let's see what happens. Because what we got going on down here, we just have the the uh, 13 and the 20, just now starting to cross that 50, heading back up. They have to lickety split, get above there, and the 50's got to follow through. And that's all got to happen before we get too much higher. Otherwise, this weakness is going to remain. And moving averages will not be in sync to actually do what we're expecting the market to do. And it could, it could do it and fail via the, the moving averages in terms of that they're not backing the move, which would be very, pretty much in line with it's a finishing move. All right, that's gonna be about it. Again, just a quick review for tomorrow. We have, at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, the Consumer Price Index. And then we have a couple of Fed, one Fed president, one Fed governor out speaking. And then we have wholesale inventories at 10 a.m. And at 2 p.m., the minutes of the Fed March FOMC meeting. Our next update will be on Wednesday, April the 10th.